Hello, uh, everybody. Um, thank you for joining the webinar today. Uh, so it's now the 12 o'clock Eastern time, and so uh, we um, start uh, the webinar here. Um, so today we have two speakers. Uh, the first speaker is uh, me. Uh, my name is Yu Kitamura. I'm in charge of the uh, Agriculture Solutions um, the, uh, based in uh, New Jersey, uh, USA. And the uh, another speaker uh, is uh, Nolan Barg, uh, who is the precision agriculture specialist uh, uh, working for the Peterson Farm Seed in uh, North Dakota. So let me start my uh, presentation first. And the, uh, the we are going to have the question and answer session uh, at the last of the uh, presentation. Uh, but the, uh, if you have any relevant, uh, you, you can hop in, but uh, the, uh, I think uh, for uh, the uh, webinar, uh, the, uh, the format, uh, it will be easier uh, to have a question and answer uh, at the, uh, the last of the presentation. Okay, so uh, the agenda here today uh, of my presentation is uh, uh, the why Sony is approaching to this digital agriculture and the uh, what the Sony Smart Agriculture Solution concept. And then the, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the product, uh, the overview. Uh, and then the, uh, I have uh, the uh, questions uh, from the uh, registrations, the, uh, where to buy, how much is it, and pricing, those things. So the, uh, I uh, added this information at the last of the uh, presentation. So uh, the Sony, um, uh, the we are the company making a variety of the products. Actually, uh, we originally uh, come from the electronic products, uh, but now the, uh, the our business is uh, the uh, expanding to like music or pictures or like cinemas or the gaming uh, PlayStation things uh, or there some financial services uh, in Japanese market. Um, and the, the reason why we diverse uh, this the, uh, the our corporate business portfolio is the because we have the uh, spirit of the innovation and challenge in our corporate principle. Uh, the right hand side is the paper is actually the um, written in 1946 and and, and our like a Sony Bible, uh, the talking about the uh, why we are here, uh, and then the. Uh, the asking the employees uh, to uh, challenge uh, with the innovation. Now, one of the uh, technology and the product portfolio Sony has is the imaging. Uh, Sony is actually the uh, the world largest uh, imaging sensor and camera manufacturers, um, and the uh, our product range of the imaging uh, varies diverse of the uh, areas of the industry. Uh, the for consumers. Uh, like the digital steel cameras or the for photographer cameras, uh, we, we we just announced the the new Alpha uh, series of the cameras uh, for the DSLR uh, products, and for videographers, uh, we we provide the professional uh, videographer cameras. Uh, and on the more enterprise business to uh, business side, uh, we provide the surveillance cameras or the uh, education and corporate environment we uh, provide the conference systems uh, the um, or the educational lecture capture systems uh, in automotive uh, we provide this the um, automotive parking assistance or the, the uh, future uh, the uh, the automatic driving uh, technologies and factory automation uh, our camera system is used and some like the medicals, uh, the, the we provide the cameras. Uh, you put this in the in your uh, the in your bodies and then check this um, the the status of the uh, organs and things. And the uh, one of our biggest the, uh, customers are broadcasters, journalists, and things. Uh, so we provide the professional uh, broadcaster broadcasting systems as well as a cinema uh, filmmaking uh, camera system. And the, lastly, the, uh, we recently started the uh, provided the cameras for the drone uh, systems. So as you can see, uh, Sony uh, provide a variety of the type of the imaging technology uh, to the variety of the industries. 
and the what we think of is the okay um what if if we start to think of the uh, this imaging technology applied to this the agriculture industry uh, agriculture industry is very new to us uh, we know nothing about this the agriculture before uh, but the last couple of years uh, we've been uh, the uh, surveying the market situation and then the uh, we are now come to this uh, place to provide our first solution for the agriculture uh, industry so what we provide uh, is the uh, we provide basically the uh, remote sensing solution using the drone uh, so uh, the we provide the remote sensing uh, the uh, systems. Looking at the uh, drone-based remote sensing solution, uh, we heard from the customers the um, their workflow and identify some of the pain points. Uh, the first point is that after the drone flight, or traditionally, uh, you upload the data to the clouds and then they process the data and generate the awesome mosaic. Uh, taking some times, the uh, sometimes the uh, depending on the, your network availabilities and then the, your service providers, uh, the response uh, sometimes days of the uh, lead time is needed. And the uh, the second point is the uh, the with the data uh, you like to uh, assess the field, but the, the lack of the intuitive uh, diagnostic tools to assess the field. And lastly, the um, <clears throat> timeliness of the action uh, with the ground truth things and all the action planning and those kind of things due to the delay of the lead time of the de data deliveries and then the uh, uh, diagnostics tools. Oops. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, to uh, answer uh, to this, the pain points, uh, we developed the uh, smart agriculture solution and the key concept is a decision making in the field, leveraging the quick action. Uh, so three uh, key points here is, uh, so we provide fast teaching uh, in field, completely offline environment. Um, so uh, we, we heard the uh, network, uh, the coverage is the issue in the field. Uh, so we developed a solution uh, without relying on any, any internet connection. So it works completely offline um, the, to generate uh, the data. And the, uh, with our payload camera systems, the, you can capture both NDVI and RGB uh, at the same time uh, at one operation. Uh, and the NDVI, uh, the uh, map uh, can be generated within a couple of minutes and an RGB additional a couple of minutes. So it's really uh, focusing on the fast teaching. The second uh, point is a dedicated field analytics assessment tool. Uh, so the uh, NDVI histogram adjustment or the quick assessment tool is available, which uh, will be demonstrated by, I think, that Nolan uh, may uh, point out the, how they use uh, the system. And the, uh, you will have the graphical stats uh, rather than the, uh, the point value things. Uh, to understand the field, diversity, uh, uniformities, those kind of things uh, graphically. An easy operation, the, uh, this system, uh, the, we developed this system together with the growers and then the agronomists uh, the, uh, in US and in Australia. So we, we, in, in autumn and winter time here, uh, we need to find some green. Um, so we, we went to this uh, South Hemisphere. Uh, to develop this uh, solution together with partners. Um, so uh, we got a lot of feedback. The, the first product we made is a, a kind of like a drone um, data processing software. So uh, we firstly developed the product, uh, the process, the flight by flight, the data. So data managed also the flight by flight, uh, but um, uh, the the, this system uh, we uh, provide to our uh, growers and agronomists, and then they all hate this. Uh, what they need is a growers friendly data management structure, which is farm, field, and then the date. So uh, we completely change those kind of things uh, to uh, our software. Um, and that actually making our software really easy to use. 
So uh, the products, uh, we have two products in, working in this system. Uh, the first product on the left hand side is the uh, multispectral cameras uh, needed to mount it on the drone. And the uh, right hand side, uh, once the data is captured, uh, there is an analytics software uh, called Fast Field Analyzer. So the multispectral cameras, uh, this camera has uh, both or two cameras uh, in it. So one is RGB cameras and the other one is ND NDVI uh, capturing cameras. And the, uh, it has a companion unit, uh, the sensor unit uh, together. And what this sensor unit is uh, playing is the, uh, it capture the GPS uh, location uh, and also uh, with its, the built-in the IMU sensor, uh, it measures the attitude uh, of this, the uh, unit. Uh, with those information actually uh, merged and then the uh, Sony uh, uniquely developed the algorithm, it can provide very precise uh, the geolocation uh, information. So attached to these the images. So uh, this is actually helping us uh, to provide this fast teaching uh, the solution uh, based on this reliable geolocation information generated by this companion sensor unit. Another function of, of the sensor unit is the uh, it can capture this light sunlight uh, the data. And the, uh, this uh, sunlight data is used for uh, compensate uh, this light condition change uh, to provide uh, the more reliable data. Uh, so uh, it's often said that the, okay, I think in the markets, the, uh, it's normally recommended like a solar noon plus minus one, two hours and things, but the, the, uh, our system, uh, the, uh, the, this system can run basically the um, based on the illumination level uh, more than fifteen thousand looks, which is like a like cloudy things. Uh, so dusk time or the the uh, after the sunset, the, this cannot work. Uh, but the uh, uh, after the sunrise and then the before the dusk time, uh, this system can work. So your operational uh, time uh, is um, the or your operational time option uh, is much wider than the traditional uh, the solution in the market. So multispectral cameras, the, um, so this is what kind of just spec thing. So the, um, what you might be interested in is uh, the RGB sensor. Uh, resolution is a 12 megapixel, which is the ground resolution is a 4.93 centimeters, 1.94 inch per pixel when it flies at 400 feet. And NDVI, uh, this is two megapixel and the 4.64 inch per pixel uh, at 400 feet flight. So that's the resolution uh, the, uh, it can deliver. Um, and the, as I explained, it's a sensor unit, a GPS uh, capture unit. It, it is compatible with a GPS and GLONASS, uh, the signals. So fast teaching, uh, the reason why uh, Sony system uh, is uh, fast uh, is because the, uh, we are relying on this, the very accurate uh, geolocation data uh, with the images. So uh, the image is captured like this uh, along with the uh, drone flight. Uh, and the conventional method is actually the, uh, you will find the same location across multiple images, uh, so pixel by pixel basis. Uh, this uh, process uh, consumed a lot of the computing power, uh, resulting in the uh, taking a lot of time. Now, uh, the Sony approach is uh, we know the uh, exact location of this the drone, uh, the cameras uh, the is capturing. Uh, and also the attitude and all the attitude, attitude uh, things. So uh, using only this the uh, metadata without using the image processing, uh, we can uh, stitch them together, which drastically uh, reduce the time of the stitching time. 
Um, now, uh, this is the uh, basic workflow uh, of the system. So you capture, you, you fly the drones, you capture the image, uh, and the image is uh, recorded to the cameras in the SD card. After the flight, you take out the SD card and then you uh, process uh, with the fast field analyzer software. Uh, and then the, uh, you can uh, create a map, uh, both for NDVI and RGB. Uh, and the, if you find any interesting point, the uh, point of interest or region of interest can be exported for your further scouting operation. Uh, also, uh, the report tool is available. So the, with that, the, uh, your uh, report uh, can be generated right after the, uh, the flight. And now uh, the Sony solution is actually uh, the working with other uh, the industry solution, uh, such as the farm management softwares uh, or the uh, flight uh, operation software. So flight operation software, uh, we work with a company called Drones Made Easy uh, based in the United States uh, in San Diego. Uh, they, uh, they provide the uh, soft app uh, called Map Made Easy. Um, sorry, the Map Pilot. Uh, so the, uh, we recommend this Map Pilot software because uh, the, this software uh, is uh, very uh, well prepared to integrate it with the Sony uh, the payload solution. Uh, so that uh, software, uh, you can use it uh, when you fly the drone. So in-field uh, operation is very simple. Uh, so you uh, place the drones uh, for the uh, for the flight, and then the you just uh, power on the uh, drones, and then the uh, waiting for a bit uh, to capture the GPS signals uh, by uh, this the Sony sensor unit. Uh, and then you just need to uh, push the recording start button on the unit. And after the flight, uh, the, you just need to uh, press the button there to stop recording. So that's the uh, only in-field operation you need to operate this camera system. You don't need any uh, calibration things. Uh, this is the, a lot of feedback we heard. Okay, calibration uh, in the, using the, the, the calibration panel doesn't work in the realistic world. Okay, the, uh, the sunlight condition is actually changed uh, during the flight, before the flight and during the flight after the flight. You have the cloud coming and the sun, sunlight is changed. So it's actually not realistically working. So the, uh, we eliminate all this the, uh, calibration process by implementing the automatic calibration process. Uh, so I talk about already this the data management structure is friendly for the growers and agronomists, found field, and then time of the capture uh, flight date uh, is our data management structure. So that's uh, how uh, the, um, the system uh, works. And I'd like to show uh, just quickly when you start the software. Let me just start the software. Um, Okay. So uh, there are some farm list there. So you select the farm and then the field list available here. Now uh, there is a button here, import flight data. So you push this button and then the, uh, you, you, or you, you put this SD card into the laptop and then you select this folder, uh, the, the image are recorded on that, select the folders. Then uh, the, um, the software uh, firstly analyze uh, this data, if data uh, is uh, captured well. And the, uh, this um, capturing location and the projected image map uh, is pop up. Now, uh, this is for uh, a quick validation of the flight. Uh, if the, or, okay, in realistic world, the, uh, you may have sometimes the, like a strong gust during the flight time, uh, which makes possibly uh, the drone, uh, the images uh, missing uh, because of the, uh, the wings and things. So uh, you like to check 
before processing, you like to check uh, if all this the image is captured well. You can do that with this screen. So you can see uh, all these images uh, fulfilled with uh, in, in this uh, field. So this data set is go, uh, good. Uh, if you don't like it, or if there are some missing point a lot, then you can refly before you reprocessing. And now um, the I'm happy for this data. So the uh, I can just import it to or the stitch this. Uh, to uh, this software. So here uh, you can, this is the uh, flight time data things. Um, if you like to change, default is the, the uh, captured time of the image. If you like to change it, you can change it um, the, um, to your uh, preferred uh, time. Uh, something like, okay, July. Okay, and then stitch. Then the stitching process starts. So uh, to have the NDVI, uh, the processing, the uh, it would take uh, maybe two minutes. Uh, the for the NDVI data. Uh, and an RGB, uh, you need another maybe a couple of minutes uh, to have this RGB data. Uh, once the NDVI data is uh, ready, and the, you can uh, start to check uh, this data uh, in here. Uh, it's in still processing, but they just while waiting for this, they are just uh, briefly introduce this thing. So this is the uh, field data checking uh, screen. Uh, you will have the uh, NDVI uh, data here. This is previously uh, stitched image, so the RGB is already here. Um, and the, uh, this is the NDVI analytics screen. Uh, and then this is the flight uh, history of this field. Um, and then the, you can have this uh, point of interest and arrow region of interest here. So that's how uh, this the uh, analytics screen is um, the where is composed of. Um, I think at the in the Nolan's presentation he will uh, talk about more about this screen things. So the uh, now I uh, leave this to, uh, leave this uh, explanation to him. Uh, by the way, uh, NDVI stitching is already done. Uh, so it's ready here, uh, and then you can start to analyze these things. So that level of the uh, quickness uh, is uh, the available uh, for your processing. And the switch it back is... So uh, the um, now uh, the compatible drones of this is uh, so the uh, DJI Phantom 4 is compatible and then the Matrice uh, 200 is coming this month and then the uh, we are working with a Vito uh, the drones uh, one of the Vito manufacturer is integrating the system now and the uh, this system uh, the uh, you can have the new purchase through our uh, the drone uh, integration partners uh, and the uh, you can actually if you have uh, the phantom 4 already uh, you can upgrade your drones uh, with this system same for the matrix 200 systems the uh, this uh, will be uh, the, um, the there will be the brackets provided from uh, our partners uh, which has the uh, DJI Skyport, so it can be attached quickly and released. Pricing uh, is uh, so the hardware product is a uh, 3,500 US dollars, and then the software is uh, starting from 999 uh, things. And the plan is the uh, software plan is up to 1,000 acre usage, uh, 999 dollars, and the up to 15,000 acres, the uh, 1,999. 
and the, you can buy uh, from the Sony uh, uh, when you go to this the uh, Sony web store, the uh, oh, sorry Sony website. Uh, you can uh, have the uh, the most updated the uh, dealer list uh, from the website. Uh, currently, we are uh, the uh, recommending this certified system integrators, the uh, RUMS based in Salt Lake City, and then drones made easy uh, based in San Diego. And the uh, Sony just started this the uh, business a couple months ago, uh, so we are uh, looking for uh, the partners uh, in the industry. Uh, so we have provided this solution. Uh, so we like to work with the solution partners, the drone solution or pre agriculture uh, analytics or data integration, uh, whatever. So if you're interested in, please contact us. So that's uh, my presentation. And the, let's move on to the Nolan's uh, presentation. OK, thank you, you for the, the background in the, the Sony system and um, how you guys brought that to market and your market values. Um, my name is Nolan Berg. Um, I work for Peterson Farm Seed. We are a local uh, independent seed company based in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, we are independent, meaning that we are free to access um, any genetics on the market, so we're not tied to any one specific brand. Um, that makes us unique. Uh, and then we're also um, known for our quality, um, and we are the largest independent seed company uh, in our footprint. Um, our company was started um, almost 25 years ago uh, by Carl Peterson and his wife, Julie. Um, and they've always been very progressive. Carl's very progressive in his interest in technology. Um, technology is here and it's coming. Uh, and he sees that and he wants to be involved with that. So um, basically, five years ago, uh, I started in this company. Um, with the goal to work with new companies, um, to be on the front edge of that uh, of the new technologies and be able to play with them and work with them um, and see what kind of value that can provide our growers. So uh, my title here in the company is Precision Systems Specialist. Um, so what I do is I research uh, and work with new companies, um, whether it's purely technology like drones and imaging, um, or also precision agriculture type products that are actually equipment um, and more specific to egg. Um, so Carl Peterson still farms. He um, farms over 3,000 acres here. Uh, and he lets us use it as kind of a playground to test uh, all these new technologies we're looking at, uh, do some agronomic trials, um, and basically look at them to see if it's valuable, valuable enough to bring new technology to our growers. Um, that's about half of my job, and the other part of my job is to actually work with our northern seed growers for production um, of the seed that we clean and grow and sell. So to give a little intro, um, my presentation is going to be a little bit more on agriculture and agronomy specifically. Um, so I'm going to talk about, kind of give a background on why we need technology um, and why we should use precision egg and why we should use variable rate. I'm gonna kind of give a background on uh, traditional agriculture versus the newer variable rate practices, um, some reasons why we could use in-season imagery. Then I'll kind of give a demo on the Smart Egg, uh, Sony Smart Egg solution. I'll walk through all the histograms and different ways you can use the imagery, uh, like you kind of demoed a little bit there. Um, and then at the end, I'll show exactly how we would create an in-season fertilizer map in corn and why we, we would want to do that. So uh, why would we do variable rate? Basically, the reason we would want to do that is because farmers don't treat each individual field the same way. They know some fields are a little tougher ground. Uh, maybe one field doesn't drain very well, so they'll treat it differently than another very high productive field. Well, the same concept is each field isn't the same throughout the entire field. There's variation in the field. So as you can see in this picture here, you can see some of those lower areas where corn isn't growing because they were too wet this spring. So um, another reason we can continue to use this technology because the equipment is actually capable of utilizing technology and being able to variable rate on the fly. So the reason behind this is we could reallocate or redistribute our inputs, our seed costs, our fertilizer costs, 
and put more seed, more fertilizer in those better areas of the field um, and put less seed, less fertilizer in those lower producing areas of the field. And later I'll kind of show how we do that. So when we talk about variable rate, there are a few potential outcomes of utilizing variable rate. Uh, traditionally, you would put a flat rate, uh, one single amount of product over the entire field, and your result would basically be dependent on the weather. So that would be that first uh, example on the left where you'd put down uh, your inputs and you'd get the same yield, uh, depending on the weather. Uh, but there's a few other ways this, this could happen. Using variable rate, you could actually put in the same inputs, but actually get higher yield. And that would be ideal. Uh, you could potentially put in less inputs and get the same yield, or you could even put in more inputs and get higher yield. Um, the holy grail would be to put in less inputs and actually get a higher yield. Uh, but the last one there, you can see there is a potential if you don't have the right information that you could actually put in less in inputs and get a lower yield. Um, so this, these are kind of the things that growers have in mind when they're trying to think whether or not they're going to want to pursue using uh, variable rate technology. So here's some more visual examples um, of what traditional agriculture is compared to variable rate. So uh, the map on the left is kind of what a traditional flat rate would look like. So farmers typically would put a flat rate of fertilizer down, a flat rate of seed down, and kind of cover that field the same way. The map on the right shows variable rate. So you're redistributing that seed. So the red areas are less amount of seed and those green areas are higher amount of seed. Uh, and like I said, I'll show how we kind of come up with those areas. We call them zones um, later on in the presentation. So specifically, I, I would like to talk about nitrogen management. So uh, traditionally, growers would put a single application down either in the spring or in the fall. Uh, it could be urea-based or anhydrous-based. Uh, and some of the new nitrogen products have stabilized products that make it uh, stay in the soil a little bit longer. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, the soil is not a stable place. It's not where you don't just lay your fertilizer out there and it stays there perfectly for your corn to use. Uh, there's a nitrogen cycle. So there's a lot of chemical reactions going on in the soil. A lot of other things want to use that uh, nitrogen. Uh, you could lose it to denitrification if it's laying on the surface or if it gets uh, sucked up with water and too wet. Uh, you could actually lose it to leaching. And that means it just moves down into the ground soil uh, out of the root zone. Uh, there could be surface loss because of a high rain and early in the spring. All of these factors are kind of in that process. So uh, we want to minim minimize our risk. Um, by doing split applications. Uh, here's a, an example of another reason why we would want to split up our nitrogen and not put it all up front. So if you were to actually put all of your nitrogen up front uh, in May, the corn plant you can see only starts to really use it around V12 towards that end, end of June, early part of July is when it really ramps up and use most of, it, of its nitrogen for the season. So here's an example of what you would do for a split nitrogen. Uh, on the left, you can see single application. Uh, and that would be all of your nitrogen up front for the entire year. So you put the whole amount down. Uh, what I'm talking about using a split application is you would put um, maybe a little bit more than half down on your base rate. And then you would judge the season and judge the weather and come back and do a variable rate application uh, later in the summer towards the end of June, early part of July. Um, and I'll kind of talk about how we can do that and why we can do that. There, it is an option to actually variable rate that base rate as well. So one of the ways we can do this is we can use a Coulter side dress unit. Uh, with this unit, uh, it's knifed in pretty soon after planting within two to three weeks. Uh, it's more efficient than putting it all up front. You're kind of opening that gap, um, but there is a narrow application window um, because if you look at that toolbar, uh, your corn can't get too high, otherwise you'll start to run it over. And there is a risk if it starts to rain too much, uh, you might not be able to get in and get that application done. Uh, another option, this has recently have been brought to market in the last five to six years, 
Uh, this is 360 Yield Center's Y drop. Um, there are other units on the market um, that do kind of the same thing, and this company just kind of made it more commercialized. So as you can see, they have these drop down units that go down in be between the row with two little hoses coming off, and they actually put the liquid product right next to the corn plant, as you can see here. Um, so there's a few advantages to this is there's a wider application window because this is mounted on a high wheel sprayer. So you can uh, split up your application to a much light later in the season, even up to tasseling and corn. Uh, another advantage is that the product is actually placed right next to the row rather than in the middle of the row like a coulter. Uh, and then you also have flexibilities if you wanted to add two applications or even three during the season. So I'm gonna give a little bit of background on why we're doing this and the costs involved, just so we can understand uh, how, why it's so important to use drone imagery in season to kind of come up with our variable rate maps. So these are some testing. Uh, this is a map that from last season uh, where we test different rates uh, and come up with different pricing to figure out uh, if that yield, the advantage we get from higher, if the cost of that application makes it, can justify that. So quickly, I'll go through this. You can just see um, those two 10 gallon strips averaged together, you get 153 bushels. The two 20 gallon strips, you get 162. 30 gallons, you get 172. And the 40 gallons, you get 181. And also in our fields, we usually put in a hot streak, which is basically double the fertilizer rate we would use for the season. So that nitrogen is not the limiting factor and you can kind of see that max yield goal. And that was 188. So if you use those price content constants on the left with, uh, these will change every season and depending on your operation. Um, but if you keep them the same, it can give you the relative based off your yield. So if we go through this, you can see that um, from 10 gallons all the way up to 40 gallons, we increased our yield um, and we actually in, increased our ROI. So from each bump, we gained about 10 to $15 with that application based off the yield. From, so from 10 gallons to 40 gallons, it was over a 30 some do dollar uh, increase, which is a dramatic price increase um, across the farm. As you can see on the last one, uh, that urea hot streak was kind of an uneconomical application because it was the rate was too high. So that's what we're kind of chasing is trying to find at what point is that rate too high where that application cost is greater than your, your yield return. Uh, last season, uh, we didn't find it. So even up to 40 gallons, uh, we saw a yield response that was justified by the pricing. Um, so this season, we replicated this test and I'll show it again uh, later here at the end of the presentation. Um, and we actually increased our base rate because uh, that 10 to 40 gallons is a good range for our Y drop system. It can't, can't really go much further out of that range. So, uh, why is this important is uh, this year in 2019, it's very important. Uh, in our area, we've had a late spring. It's, it was a cold, wet spring. Uh, as we got in the summer, it continued to stay very wet uh, and then it got really hot. So we had a large parts of the field that were completely covered in water with hot temperatures. So when you have that combination, um, that nitrogen that's in the soil is getting eaten up by microbes. Um, and um, it's getting eaten up by microbes and it's also those corn plants are suffocating because they're underwater. Um, so we have very, this season we have very variable crops. So essentially we have lots of areas where there's dead corn and bare ground. Um, so using variable rate technology is gonna be key to redistribute those fertilizer products to those areas that have corn and some of those areas that are very high productive still. And it's also possible in some of those areas, the corn just got hurt a little bit and we wanna try save it with more fertilizer. So why do we use drone imagery uh, in this situation? So we use drone imagery because the weather conditions every year change. So we create zone maps uh, every year. Uh, sometimes they don't change very much, but in season we may change that application map based off of what's happened. Um, that stand of that corn, uh, dependent on this season's weather, 
the soil fertility, the amount of fertilizer still left in that soil is definitely dependent on how much rain we've gotten, what kind of temperatures we've had uh, in the stage of the crop. So drone imagery, it's quickly attainable uh, at the time that you need it. So um, as you know, with satellite imagery, there is cloud cover. Um, so if there's cloud cover during those times where you're trying to get an image, uh, you may not get one. So you can go out with the drone and actually map a field uh, and get that pretty quickly. The drone imagery is also has some much higher resolution than satellite imagery. Um, you could purchase satellite imagery down to about a meter, um, but with drone imagery, you can get down to about two centimeters per pixel. Um, so it's much higher resolution. Uh, then again, your applicator, your sprayer or Y drop uh, is a much bigger uh, application width, but having that higher resolution really does help pinpoint on what's going on in those fields. So now I'm gonna switch over and go through a quick demo on the Sony Smart Pay solution. Um, so you can see exactly how you could use that software. So when you open the software, like you uh, showed earlier, uh, basically it gives your farm list um, where you can go in and click on your farm and then you'll have a list of fields. Once you click on your field that you're interested in, uh, it'll bring up uh, your stats on the left and your event list where you'll see the amount of flights you've had so far. Um, so we'll go back to this first flight and as you can see your histogram it looks pretty green um, because you haven't adjusted your histogram yet. So what I like to do is I'll actually use the split screen feature because we do have an RGB map as well for a color image for reference. So what I'll do is I'll split screen and I'll actually zoom into an area that I know either has bare dirt or uh, has some tougher corn where it's struggling a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'll drag this histogram. And as you can see that NDVI is turning more and more red and I'll make it so that that bare ground is this dark red color. Now, when you zoom out, you'll really see that variation of the field. So you're not changing the data of this picture. Those numbers are all the same. All we're doing is changing how we are visualizing that data. So the nice thing with the Sony Egg software is the fact that when you do this, it's replicatable um, to the rest of your flights. So if I go to this next flying date, it keeps those same minimum and maximum data points. And so you actually be able to see those changes over time. This last image you can see was actually after our fertilizer application so that you can see uh, the corn has gotten much better from that first flight to this last flight. Uh, a couple other features I wanna highlight is you can actually zoom in um, and if you're, interested in what that is you can see it pretty well over here um, but if you click on this magnifying button and click on a spot it'll actually bring up on the right hand side uh, the actual full high resolution pictures of those maps so you can double click on those and then from there you can zoom in and kind of investigate to see exactly what happened so this is just a little the planter must have stopped and picked up and moved a little bit so you can do that you can also drop, if you have points that you want to visit later or scout, you can just drop a point, you can name it, you can add some comments, hit okay, and it'll leave it there. This one we know is a planter skip. Uh, another tool is that you can actually create a region of interest. So if this area, I wanna analyze it further, I can draw a box around it, name it. You can also take some notes if you'd like. And after that, when you click on this region, what it's gonna do is bring up some statistics uh, based off the data and the image. So you can see the minimum and maximum amount the average, the median, and the standard deviation. This is pretty interesting if you have test plots or if you want to track a specific location over time. Um, what you can do 
is you can actually go down here where you have your region of interest and you can pin that region. Um, so now when you go to other flight times, say we did this on the first one, now we can go to that last flight, click on that region and you can compare your statistics. So you can actually quantify that change over time. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about um, reports. So anytime you do these types of pins um, and region reports, you can click this report button. And what it's going to do is create a nice clean report that you can print or email um, showing uh, the statistics of the, each point. Um, so it's called field report, gives your farm and field and the date, gives your, uh, your analytics that you used shows the pictures of the map, both NDVI and RGB, shows that you had two points of interest in a region report, and then it breaks them down further where your point of interest has the location if you need to, to walk back to that point, shows the picture, and also shows the region report with the statistics. So this is a nice way to share this information with other people on your operation. Um, and you can email that or just print it out. And then lastly, and probably the most importantly, is how do we use this information? Um, it's nice to have it in the software and you can manipulate it, but uh, being an agronomist, we need to actually use this information to do something. So now we'll move on and I'll show you exactly how we would use this um, within a farm management software system to create an actual prescription. So you have a few options to export. Um, you can ex export a GeoJSON or a KML or GPX. Um, and you can also go in on what I typically use. If you go in here and open with Explorer, you can actually see the GeoTIFF image uh, and import that into your software. So I'm going to jump back to my uh, presentation and kind of show examples of that and then go from there. So come back here. Okay, so this is a screenshot from my egg uh, software that I'm using. I'm currently using uh, Egg Leaders SMS. There are many other softwares out there. You can use SST. Um, there are a lot of other ones. Uh, they're all very similar. Um, this is just the one I'm using for this example. So this is the variable rate zone map for this field. So uh, you may wonder how we get this zone map. So uh, you use a combination of different layers uh, and run it through the software to create zones. Um, so one of the layers you would use is soil maps. Uh, as you can see, the variation around here is not very high. We only have two soil types on that field. Um, but in other regions, this information is pretty valuable. That it'll show much more variation in the field. We also use elevation maps, whether that's from your planter or combine, um, or this in case was from a LIDAR sensor. Um, Use a color drone map, use some soil testing to kind of vary to check your rates. NDVI maps, whether that's from a drone or a satellite. Um, I prefer drone because it's a higher resolution. And then yield maps. And we'll use multiple yield maps. Um, you pick out the ones that are more, most relevant to that variation in the field. And basically, we run this through the software uh, and it mashes it all together and you come up with management zones. Uh, with these management zones, we kind of get a uh, yearly improvement with the more information that we gather. So we get more imagery, um, more soil testing, uh, and basically you'll come up with a range from your highly productive soils to your lower productive soils. And uh, typically what we do is we create a variable rate planting map. Um, so we have a lower rate in those poor producing soils and a higher rate where we really want to push that population and push that fertility in those higher producing areas of the field. Uh, so the next step here, this is actually that Sony drone map imported into this software. So it looks a little more pixelated. Uh, this software can't handle that very high resolution that the drone uh, can capture. And it pixelates it a little bit, uh, but that's okay because the applicator or the sprayer that we're gonna be using uh, has a larger 
spray pixel essentially. So as you can see, uh, the drone map is pretty similar to our variable rate zone maps, but it's a little different based off this season. Um, you can actually see more productive areas in that southern part of the field than I had predicted. Um, and it's a little sharper of an image so you can see some more variation in that north part of the field. So what you do is you create, uh, this is the prescription map. So I used this previous uh, NDVI map and added prescriptions um, rates to each one of those zones. So as you can see on the left, we have a zones uh, from zero gallons all the way up to 30 gallons. Uh, and what we're using is a 28% nitrogen solution. Uh, it's a liquid application with that Y drop. So this was the prescription. And then as you can see on this next slide is the actual application in that field. So those areas that are blank, there was no fertilizer put down. And then you can see it progressively goes up to those green areas where we have higher producing corn. That corn is still living and doing pretty well. So we're gonna feed it. Uh, and it also is at that higher population. So as you can see with that drone image and this map, they line up pretty well with those areas that don't have any corn plants. There's also no fertilizer in those areas that are dark green and have thriving plants. We actually added uh, more fertilizer. So another benefit of the Sony solution is that you can track this progress throughout the season. Uh, as you can see, these first two images on the left were actually before our fertilizer application, and the one on the right was about a week after that application. Um, you can see it's much greener and some of those red spots have filled in. This is partly due to the plants are just getting larger and kind of overhanging and filling it in, but you can also see that some of those areas that were kind of yellowish are greening up now, um, and hopefully we're helping that corn plant thrive a little bit more. So with this, we are, we're continuing to test and monitor. This is this year's uh, Y drop testing. As you can see, we did the same type of zero gallons, 10 gallons, 20 gallons, 40 gallons. We also did the urea hot streak. Um, it's a much larger one and actually is diagonal so that it's cutting through all those different rates throughout the field. So we're actually gonna get double testing, um, being able to see uh, what the rate was in combination with that urea hot streak. Here is just a color drone picture. You can see uh, that hot streak showing up right through the middle of that picture. And actually this morning we went on flu uh, with the Sony solution, uh, that same field, and you can clearly see that hot streak. Uh, we're gonna continue to apply this field. Uh, and my prediction is as the corn starts to dry down, we're gonna be able to see those other rate strips within the field as well. And hopefully we'll be able to quantify some um, actual statistics on that NDVI value compared to yield. So lastly, I wanna just talk about some other use cases of the Sony solution. Uh, you can use it basically as a scouting tool to more accurately direct where you're gonna go for your scouting. Uh, traditionally, you just drive a four-wheeler around that field and you're looking for uh, anything wrong in that field and you may miss some spots. So you could fly quickly with this operation, stitch it in, stitch it in your truck on your computer and visually see those areas that need your attention and you can go directly to them. Um, it really helps kind of pinpoint where you need to go and see what's going on. Uh, some other use cases, we've had a couple customers where they had uh, due to our wet year up here is we've had a lot of overland flooding and a lot of crops dying. Um, so you can actually fly it with this and calculate acres lost due to that overland flooding. Uh, a couple other instances is you could use if you had drift in your field uh, from a neighbor or from your own field, you could see, uh, calculate those acres that were affected by that. Uh, last season, when we were using uh, the same Sony solution, we actually could detect some IBC spots in our soybeans. Um, and it seemed like we could detect them a little bit earlier than we saw them in the field. Um, and so this could be valuable um, to be able to use products um, that seem to fix that. Um, you could either do it in season possibly, or even keep those maps and do it that next season that you have soybeans on that field. Uh, and then there is a potential to detect uh, diseases earlier. Uh, a few years ago, we had gosses wilt in some of our corn. 
and it seemed like uh, this camera solution was actually picking it up a little bit earlier and quantifying um, where it is in that field. Uh, corn is very hard to scout when it's eight feet tall um, and you can't really see those little spots in the field. So this has potential to see other diseases um, and ideally it'll be able to see it before we'll be able to see it with our human eye. So with that, um, I want to say thank you. Um, again, I'm Nolan Berg um, from Peterson Farmstead. If you guys want to reach out, if you have any questions more on what we're working on, or if you're interested in partnering or helping um, further the precision systems um, that we're working on, uh, we welcome that. Uh, and then I think I'll pass it back to you, and then we'll take some questions if anybody has them. Thank you very much, Nolan. Yes. Um, so uh, now, uh, if you have any questions, then the uh, please uh, write a question over there. Just uh, uh, raise the question. I have one question coming in. Uh, the sorry, the I have one question coming in here. Let me uh, check. No, where is it? The question. Oh yes. Um, so first question uh, is the uh, NDVI. Uh, so it's from the Jenny uh, region. Uh, is the NDVI being calculated using NIR? Is it a true NDVI, NDVI image? Yes. Uh, so this uh, system, uh, the um, we use NIR, uh, the uh, band signals, and then some red uh, signals for calculating the NDVI. So it's exactly uh the uh what the ndvi is defined so it's true ndvi yes and the second question i have uh from james uh Lola Ving. thank you uh if you need the ipad for the mapping integration so the fast field uh, fast field analyzer is cross platform for ipad mac os integration um so uh, for this the uh, fast field analyzer uh is actually running on the windows base now uh the uh so uh the flight planning software is the uh map pilot case you can use this i uh, ipad uh or the uh, iphones uh but the processing uh the for uh the uh fast field analyzer the, we, we need a windows uh based uh the laptop second question Uh, sorry, just a moment. Wait, the second question is the, uh, what about mapping uh, localization? How does it go outside of the US? Um, so uh, the this uh, system has been, uh, the started to be sold actually in, starting from US uh, a, couple, a couple of months ago. Uh, we are considering the uh, the regional expansion and the uh, the for futures. The so if you have any specific uh, the uh, location you're interested in, the, the please contact directly to us. Uh, the third question uh, we have interested in the partnering distributing into Australia. Can I get some contact details? Yes, uh, I I'm now sharing my sorry the contact detail uh, here so the uh, you can contact uh, to me uh, please and the uh sorry the more this window away from the share was what is what is this where is okay yeah i think that's the question um any other question anybody So uh, if you need further information, the website is available here. Uh, so you can check further information there. Uh, also, the, uh, if you need some specific, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the question, the please contact me directly here. So to close the, uh, the, uh, the webinars, the, uh, just, just introducing uh, just um, one topic for your lunch. Uh, so the uh, Sony works for the cinema industry, the, uh, and then the, um, 
uh, the digitalization of the cinema is one of the big topic for the last decades. And Sony was actually the leading uh, this digitalization of the cinemas uh, in this, uh, this space. Now, uh, the Star Wars by uh, George Lucas uh, has been captured as uh, the first digitalized, fully digitalized uh, the um, cinemas. It was like episode two, uh, I think. And the, this actually, the uh, digital cinema uh, was uh, the system uh, was developed by Sony and uh, George Lucas uh, used that systems uh, to uh, film all this the uh, episode two. And the, at the last end rule of the, the cinemas, uh, the, he put the nice, sorry, he put this nice, uh, the, I'm sorry, uh, the end, at the end rule, uh, the, the credit to this, the uh, Sony engineers uh, who has been working for uh, this digitalization process. So uh, that's something uh, we are very proud of and we like to uh, contribute to this agriculture industry uh, and we like to, uh, uh, to, to, to have your feedback um, the, like this uh, for our future. So that's uh, what we are trying to do, and the, uh, we are going to continue. So uh, please, uh, the uh, work with us, and then the um, uh, contact to us the, if you ha have any interest. So that's the end of the presentation today, uh, and thank you very much.